And, uh, well, Mata's budget in Kenya is that the same in Uganda. Solomon Serwanja. Well, Michael, it's a cold morning here in the capital, Kampala, and it's beginning to drizzle, but, I mean, we hope that it will pick up later on. Now, all eyes will be at the Kampala Serena Conference Center as the members of parliament and dignitaries and, indeed, the president of this country as he reads out the budget for the financial year 2018-2019. Now, Michael, I can tell you for sure that this country will be spending about 30 Two trillion shillings for the financial year 2018 2019. 2018 2019. Now, about 24 trillion shillings will be from uh, revenue collection from the taxes that we pay as a country, and about 7.7 .7 trillion shillings will be coming through from external funding. This country has a debt burden of about 38 trillion shillings. Quite a huge one, but according to the Ministry of Finance, it's not above the threshold. The challenge, though, Michael, is with hitting the target. The Uganda Revenue Collection Body, which is the Uganda Revenue Authority, is still struggling. Now, just this concluding financial year, Michael, I can tell you that we had a budget of about 29 trillion shillings and about 15 trillion shillings was to come through from the revenue collection. But URA, which is the tax collecting body here, has failed to hit the target. And so how do they hit the target, the 24 trillion shillings target, which they have to contribute? They have put taxes, new taxes in place, including taxing social media in Uganda, Michael. I'm sure you've heard about this for each social media. For every day, you'll be charged 200 shillings. Now, imagine if you're charging 200 shillings on a population that has about 10 million people using social media in this country. That's quite a lot of money that you should be collected. Also, for mobile money services, to, to bring it home to Kenya, that's M-Pesa and Airtel money. Here in Uganda, we have MTN mobile money and other uh, mobile monies in this country. There is a 1% tax which has been put on that. Also, taxes have been put on uh, cooking oil and also on fuel. By and large, it is to collect about one trillion shillings to add on their, on, on their revenue collection. And I think I can tell you, Michael, with all due respect, that Ugandans are really up in arms with these new taxes. But hey, look, Parliament already passed that uh, bill, and therefore we have to pay those taxes, Michael. All right, uh, Solomon, and uh, maybe just in comparison, because it seems like now in East Africa, we talk in terms of trillions. How different is the Ugandan budget from the previous year? Because in Kenya, we are looking at uh, a huge increase. Uh, we are looking at three trillion, and I'm sure in comparison, it may sound less, but of course, uh, there's also the conversion to consider. But how, what's the difference in terms of last year's budget and this year's budget in Uganda? Well, last year, uh, I can tell you, Michael, that our budget was 29 trillion shillings. It has now risen to 32 trillion shillings, which is uh, about 4 trillion shillings higher. Now, uh, about 3 trillion shillings higher. And you see, the challenge, though, is how do we meet this target? Because if you've been struggling to hit uh, the target from uh, rev domestic revenue collection, I think as a country, we need to work harder to, uh, you know, to pay our taxes. The Uganda Revenue Authority has been coming out with several challenges, including the high levels of tax defaulters. And of course, we know that they have been working hard to hit that target. Now, President Jerry Seven was not very happy with them because they have not been meeting their targets for the previous about three, four financial years. But I mean, they have huge targets to, 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 to hit. Where is the money going to come from? Because we have to finance, for example, Michael, I can tell you that the works and transport sector will be taking the lion's share for this uh, financial with about 24 trillion shillings. The education sector has also been given, uh, you know, priority. And also we have the health sector and also the security sector. Challenge is where is this money going to come from? But Michael, let me draw your attention to the works and transport sector because I know that there are some projects that Uganda is working on which are also in line with the Kenyan vision. For example, the standard gauge railway, Kenya has been boasting of moving ahead of the other East African counterparts on this issue. Uganda is dedicated because a lot of that money will be going to finance the standard gauge railway. There's been all uh, promises that will hit, will be able to finalize those works by the end of the year 2019. I mean, we're still a bit back, but the president has said that a lot of uh, focus will be put on improving transport, and that is also 
uh, to will be going to the construction of the standard gauge railway. This country has also improved its road network by and large. I can tell you, Michael, if you've been traveling uh, using major highways out of Kampala, most of them have been tarmacked. And the president has been, of course, focusing more on that. But I think many of the questions that are coming from different economists is, yes, you've made the infrastructure. But what are we even going to export? What is it that we are growing as a country? I mean, Uganda is, Uganda is known to have its backbone, uh, uh, which is agriculture. But the challenge has been that the agricultural growth, Michael, in this country has only been 3%. Now, previously, it used to be about 58 Right now, it's about 3%. And therefore, we, it means that, Michael, we don't have what we're exporting to the world. Our import-export deficit has actually grown so much. We used to export a lot of coffee, cotton in the earlier days. Right now, we don't do that as we used to do. And so I think a lot of arguments around how do we commercialize agriculture so that we can be able to export more and sort of cover the import-export deficit around that area, Michael. And thank you very much, uh, Solomon Serwanja. And in the little Luganda I know, I will say Kale Sebo. Thank you very much for that update.